New to homeschooling? I'm going to walk you through the legal side, the curriculum choice questions, socialization, sports, and all the other topics that you might be thinking of. They will be listed in the description below. Grab your coffee, tea, or water, and let's get started. Now I know that you want to know the legal side of homeschooling, but I am going to talk about the juiciest question of them all, and that is, what about socialization? Now I don't know many homeschoolers who have not thought about this, myself included, but then I said to myself, self, when you were in school, you didn't get a chance to talk. As a matter of fact, everything was hush-hush. Everybody had to be quiet or else you'd get in trouble. And when I taught sixth grade, it was the same thing. I had to tell my students, okay, settle down. It's time to get started for school. And they only had that opportunity to socialize when they were at recess. And so I want you to not overthink socialization. Here are some suggestions, as well as some things that you're probably already doing. Get togethers of any kind, family outings, any special events that you have in your family, those are all part of socialization. Some suggestions would be going on field trips with other homeschoolers, joining a co-op and being amongst those homeschoolers as well. And if you don't know what a co-op is or an EP program, I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Joining the 4-H club, any local sports recreation center, and going to church. Those are all forms of places that your kids can socialize. I would strongly consider you continue taking your kids to places like the grocery store or the bank and allowing them the opportunity to say hello to the cashier and even interact beyond that. Lastly, I would strongly encourage you to consider joining a local Facebook homeschooling group. Go to Facebook and type in the search engine, something that is specific to you, including your city and state or the county that you live in. So for example, D schoolers of Brevard County or high school homeschoolers that live in Florida and see what pops up and connect with that homeschool group by interacting on that page and seeing what events that they may have. In a nutshell, I would not worry about socialization, although I know where you're coming from because I thought the same thing. But once I thought about it and jumped into homeschooling, I realized that it was easy peasy. Now that we've discussed socialization, I want to just pause for a moment and have you consider why. Why are you thinking of homeschooling? And what type of environment do you want for your homeschool? We will touch base on these in just a moment, but just tuck that away in your back pocket and think about it. And if you have an answer, protect it. Legal information. Yes, it is legal in all 50 states. Let's take a look at a few states and look at their requirements so that I can walk you through the process so that when you're looking at your state, you know exactly what to look for. This is the HSLDA's website. Now, each state is different. If withdrawn mid-year, you'll have to inform the school and they probably have paperwork to withdraw. But for those of you who are starting at the beginning of the school year, please note that each state's requirement is going to have you do something different. The state might require a letter of intent or there might be a document that you need to sign as well as get notarized. Please note that sometimes these documents need to be updated every single year. Hi, my name is CJ and I have been homeschooling since kindergarten. I have a 10th grader, an 8th grader, and a 7th grader. I've learned quite a bit of information along the way and I want to share that with you. If you are enjoying this content, please give it a thumbs up. Let's continue. Let me tell you a little secret about patience. I too thought that I just wouldn't have enough patience. Um, now that people know that I homeschool, I get comments all the time. You must have the patience of a saint. Oh, there's no way that I could have enough patience to homeschool. I could never do that. And maybe you have thought these same things, and I understand. Let me share with you and also encourage you to know that the patience that you have for other things in your life will be the same patience that you will exhibit and show in your homeschool setting. You know, patience is developed over time with any new thing, and it would be the same when you begin homeschooling and even um, at the stage that I am in with my middle schoolers and high 
high schoolers. You definitely don't need patience in order to begin homeschooling. The takeaway from this is that homeschooling doesn't require any other super power patience um, that's any different than any other aspect in your life. You probably have more patience than what you are actually giving yourself credit for. And over time, the patience that you will need will be developed. Like with any new skill, continue to practice and seek patience and it will come. Don't let the culture stir you away or discourage you from homeschooling your child if that is what you truly want to do with the stigma of, I don't have enough patience. You will develop patience over time. So there are some days that I need a timeout and in the middle of a lesson or at the beginning of a morning that's kind of going um, crazy, there are times where I would even excuse myself and say to my kids, you know, I need a half an hour <laughs> or um, I'm just going to step outside for a moment and then I go and regroup myself. Sometimes I pray, sometimes I hum, sometimes I excuse myself for another moment later on that afternoon just so that I can gather myself and work on my own patience. So those are just some practical tips that you can take with you if you are thinking that you don't have enough patience. So what do I teach? Well, every state is different in their requirements. More than likely, you'll have to cover the four basics, math, history, science, and some form of language arts. So be sure to look at those specific subject requirements that your state should have listed and make sure you abide by those rules. Do I need to create a lesson plan like the teachers do in the schools? That is a fair question. And nine times out of 10, the answer is no. Usually the curriculum that you purchase comes with some sort of guide or lesson plan that you can use and usually tweak without a problem. So the answer to that is no. So what is a co-op? What is an enrichment program? And what is a hybrid program? Let's start with the co-op. A co-op is usually a bunch of classes ranging from mandatory subjects all the way to electives such as history, science, and then woodworking, theater, fun classes like that. In that co-op that usually happens over a day or two, they also have uh, end-of-day activities, I should say, or other activities on the weekends, um, field trips, possibly some sort of homeschool dance, and things like that. An enrichment program usually has none of that, and it is just focused on main subjects. Hybrid classes usually involve your homeschooler doing some of their courses at home, and some of their courses at a local school, public or private, depending on where you live. And it can also include some classes online. The way to find out about any of these types of um, additional homeschooling resources is to join your local Facebook homeschooling groups. How do you do that? On Facebook, in the search engine, you will type in your area of location by county or city or state, and you can type in co-op. So for example, Brevard County co Homeschool Co-op, um, or if you have a homeschooling friend, you can ask them. You can also go to your state's Department of Education, and many times they'll have a homeschooling page with additional links to local homeschooling resources. And sometimes they will list some co-ops and enrichment programs there. Let's talk about charter schools. Many people have different views on if the charter school is truly a homeschool option. And I don't want to dive into whether you believe that it is or not. I do want to mention it because I have received that question and been asked that question many, many times. What about the charter school option? By definition, a charter school is a public school packaged for the home. They offer planned curriculum, standardized testing, virtual classes, teacher monitoring, and some on-site group classes and extracurricular activities. Charter schools utilize taxpayer funds. Now, there are some freedoms that you will lose as a charter school student. If that is something that you are interested in, 
You can look to see if your state has an option and find out what the requirements are. Let me encourage you to um, not feel guilty for choosing that option when people may come at you and say that it's not homeschooling. At the end of the day, you have to do what's best for your family. If you have any other questions about that, please let me know in the comments below. But I don't have a place in my home to homeschool. Where am I supposed to do that? Great, great question. When I started out, I had a picture perfect classroom and I made it look just like we were in uh, a brick and mortar school. But as time went on, I realized that the couch, the dining room table, the kitchen, and everywhere else was the perfect spot for my kids to do their homeschool. Actually, we spend most of our time doing homeschool at the dining room table. I personally would not worry about that. I'm going to give you a few resources for you to look at other homeschool options if you truly want that cut out homeschool space. This first video is of a minimalist homeschool space. Then another is of a small homeschool space. Now, you can design your homeschool space however you'd like. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just don't get caught up in the fact that you have to have a specific room and location in order to homeschool. But like I said, if you want some more ideas, please take a look at these videos. I know that they will really help you out. What am I supposed to say when people ask, where do my kids go to school? Just be confident, say that they're homeschooled, and give a homeschool name if you have one. I have a link here to help you figure out a cool homeschool name if you'd like to do that. I need help with special education. Okay, I'm glad that this is being brought up. I don't have any particular expertise in this area. However, I do have a few homeschool moms that have some information on their channel. So I will list that here. I also know that locally, in some states, you can get some assistance in the special needs area. So you'll just need to look at your state's educational page for that information. In the meantime, check out these channels. What about sports? What about the dances? What about all the parties and things like that? All the cool stuff that happens in the schools. Well, I would strongly suggest going to a Facebook page and doing a search for home school groups, home school co-ops in your particular county or state and see what pops up. Where I am locally, my kids are part of a homeschool sports team, as well as there are um, different groups and different moms that put together homeschool dances or Valentine's Day parties or things of that nature. In the enrichment program that they are a part of, sometimes they'll do a little party based off of the season. That's how we stay involved in sports and extra activities. A lot of times local businesses will support homeschoolers in fundraisers um, and you'll also notice that some sports teams may have some car washes and just some things like that that other groups have in the public education system. If you're interested in something like that, maybe even you in due time can create some of these fun activities. But Nowadays, there is a plethora of these activities available. It's just a matter of looking for them. How do I afford homeschool? Once you decide what curriculum or books you're going to use, you can search online Facebook groups, eBay, big box online stores, thrift shops, and also go directly to the vendor. With a little bit of research, you'll also notice there are many, many, many websites that now offer free curriculum, and they are stellar. You can even have your child that's in high school take some college courses that are free as well. You just have to check that out and see if it's available in your state. I'm going to list a few for you here, as well as in the description box. So take a look at them, see if they fit what you're looking for, and see if it's going to be a good fit for your family. This is just a short list. And remember, you don't have to pay lots and lots of money in order to have a fabulous educational curriculum for your child. What about high school? All right, I'm in the midst of it. So let me help you out. The biggest thing with homeschool in high school is number one, obeying the state's homeschool requirements. Number two, identifying if your child is college bound, trade school bound, or 
You just don't know right now. Bound. Number three, knowing what your high schooler is passionate about and what they may want to do in their career. And they may not know, and that's okay. But if they do, it's a good place to start to know what they're passionate about so that you can align their four-year plan with some of those passions. Number four, keeping a record of everything. And I want to leave you with this. My thought is that all kids in high school should at least get their high school diploma or GED. One thing that I would like to advise you on is to make sure that you involve your high schooler in whatever process you're thinking out, as well as continue to follow us here at Homeschooling Through High School as I walk my 10th grader along this journey and I have an uprising 9th grader um, and then very soon um, another high schooler coming along. Make sure to stick with us, like and subscribe so that you can follow our high school journey. About curriculum, what is the perfect curriculum choice? Keep in mind that no single product will work for everybody. Let's talk about four B's. The B's are basics, budget, but I don't know how to teach, and the busy buyer. Let's discuss those in detail. The basics. So depending on your state's requirements, more than likely you will have to cover the basics. Arithmetic, science, history, and some form of language arts. Budget. What is your budget? There are all price ranges. And note, it doesn't mean that you need to spend more money in order to get a quality curriculum. There are all sorts of fantastic free curriculum and low cost curriculum that is out there. I'll list several of those options here for you. But I don't know how to teach science, or more specifically, chemistry. Note that some classes you can outsource. You can have kids attend classes online, they can even join a co-op, or you can have a trusted local expert teach your child, for example, a former scientist that likes to teach science classes. And lastly, the busy buyer. If there is one piece of advice that you take from this, do not overbuy curriculum. Don't get caught up in the most popular curriculum that's out there or whatever is trending. I want you to ask yourself, does my child struggle with reading? Am I interested in a faith-based or secular curriculum? Do I want to teach as a family or teach individually? Will it be easier for me to have family subjects or to do things separately? There are many family style curriculums that are out there and I'll list that for you here. Does your child cringe when they see a math book? Or do they just love history and they are interested in all things history? And hint, you will want to search for a curriculum that encompasses all of that from the language arts even to the math. Are you the main homeschool teacher? And if so, do you work? You'll have to think about the time commitment. Are you looking for a rigorous approach or a more gentle curriculum? What concerns do you have um, from the time that they possibly left public school? Where were they struggling? You may even need to request the school records. Are there any special needs that need to be addressed? Does it need to be a bit more structured of a curriculum? Are there family activities after school hours that you need to consider? These are just some things for you to think about. Finally, what is going to work best with your unique family? Well, this is why we need to do research. You can ask a trusted homeschooling friend or do a Facebook search. You will need to decide what is best for your family and your dynamic and your family personality because your family is different from mine. The point is that you want to find out what's going to work for your family. There are so many trending curriculums out there, flashy curriculums out there, um, curriculums that promise to do A, B, and C, but only you can make that decision. Listen to your gut. I've heard about learning styles. What are those? There are several learning styles. Let's start with visual. Those are learners who prefer to see information presented visually such as charts or videos. Auditory. Those learners prefer to hear the information verbally, such as lectures, discussions, or even audio recordings. Kinesthetic. Those are the learners who prefer hands-on activities. Reading and writing. 
These learners prefer to read and write with tools like textbooks, articles, and written instructions. And lastly, logical, mathematical. These learners really understand information when presented logically and through mathematical concepts. Now your child is probably not one or the other. More than likely, there's a combination of these learning styles that they exhibit. There are lots of tools and many curriculums that cater towards specific learning styles or a combination. Please give me a description of the different types of homeschoolers. Yes, I will. Let's start with traditional. The traditional homeschooler has a structured environment. They like a schedule. They like daily assignments. Uh, usually they have their kids sitting at a desk. Uh, they follow a traditional school calendar. That is a traditional homeschooler. The unschooler emphasizes child-led learning. So children pursue their interests and their passions and have very little structure and very little parental involvement as well. The eclectic homeschooler likes a mix. That mix involves different educational styles that will fit their children's needs. They may use a little bit of the traditional approach, a little bit of the unschooling approach, a little bit of the classical approach, whatever combination is going to work best for their child. A classical homeschooler draws from the classical education model. Grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Studying classical literature, studying history, and studying languages such as Latin. They focus a lot on critical thinking skills. The Charlotte Mason homeschooler focuses heavily on living books. Living books are rich, narrative-based texts. The vocabulary is strong. Charlotte Mason homeschoolers also expose their kids to nature, and they usually have very short lessons. They usually have a very gentle approach to teaching, and they emphasize strong character. Religious or faith-based homeschoolers, they center their curriculum around faith-based material. Then we have the virtual and online homeschooler. These homeschoolers use digital platforms, online classes, and virtual school to deliver education remotely. They may have a structured curriculum or it could be a little bit more flexible. Secular homeschoolers. Secular homeschoolers prioritize a non-religious approach to education. They focus on academics and keep religious influence out. Now these are just a few of the examples of the different types of homeschoolers. I use the eclectic, secular, and religious, and classical. I'm a mix of a lot of them, depending on the subject. And you may find that that might apply to you as well. Do you have any resources for placement tests? Well, let me first tell you what they are. It is an assessment for you to see where your child is. Now, it's not necessary, but it is a useful tool. And remember, a placement test is not perfect, but it does give you a general idea. I am going to link a handful of placement test options for you in the description box. Well, CJ, I'm still stumped on curriculum. I don't know what to do. Okay, pause and hear me out on this. You may need to do your local school's online program just until you figure it all out. You may need to do a soft opening for school. And what that is, is one subject a week with this new curriculum that you just received. You may need to go to Barnes and Noble, go to Costco and pick up one of those big fat books that has everything in it. And you may need to guide your child through that until you find the right curriculum. You may need to just get a stack of books from the library and read aloud for a while. You may need to revisit a bit of what they've just learned in school and then come back to the curriculum search. And I just wanna say that it's all okay. You may need to de-school. Let me explain what that is. De-schooling in its simplest form is adjusting, disconnecting, and recovering from public school. You're taking a break from the traditional and you are now t turning your brain toward homeschooling. Sometimes it's really, really hard to separate, oh, I have this public school or private school mentality and now I have to think about homeschooling and I'm doing this in my home. Sometimes it's tough to do that. And so you may just need a break from it all. 
I have some resources here for you um, with additional de-schooling information. I have some don'ts for you. Don't compare yourself to what I'm doing or what you see others are doing. Remember, you have to tailor it for your family. So you've got to do what's best for you and your family. Don't get caught up in all of the extra stuff that you hear. Morning baskets, morning binders, themed days, journal books. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You can add those stuff later if you like, but for now, keep it simple. Don't feel like you have to join every single homeschool co-op or homeschool group that's out there. Again, do your research, see what fits best for you and your lifestyle. Just because the homeschool class is available doesn't mean that it will be the best fit for your family. So make sure that you don't feel pressured.